What's up, everyone? Jacob Roach back here from Mixing with Metal. I'm so stoked you guys decided to tune in today. Uh, first off, before we get into the video, just a big thank you to everyone. We've reached 1,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Uh, I never thought we'd get 100 or 200 or 500, or now we have 1,000, and that's awesome. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a giveaway later this week in the next couple of days, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can find that video, and it should be pretty cool. I'm going to give away some stuff and it's a whole thing it's going to be a really good time but anyway we're back here today for part three of how to mix metal drums and today we're going to go over the kick drum so the last two videos we've gone over top down mixing we went over processing our overheads and now we're going to the kick drum before we jump in here's where we left off last week All right, and listening to that, you might notice a particular element sticks out really bad, and that's the kick drum. And that's why I almost always go for the kick drum first. I do the top-down mixing so I get an overall view of the drums. The overheads is like a, a little closer look, and now I dive into the individual elements. And typically, that's the kick drum. Sometimes it's the snare. It just really depends. Uh, in this case, I did the kick drum first, so let's jump into it. First off, this was recorded with a kick pad, so this would sound like just straight in. Okay, and then in here we have the the samples that we use. These are supposed to be on here actually, so hang on one second. Okay, here we go. Yeah, now I have them in. I just gotta load these two samples up because I, there we go, create a fuller hierarchy for them. Great, so I have a bunch of samples here. These two are from the actual kick. Or the actual, yeah, the actual kick. Uh, that's a minority Green Day kick, American Idiot kick, and then some other samples. And I know all these are really quiet right now, but when combined together, they're a lot louder. So here's how they sound together. All right, cool. So those are just our samples with it. Next, after we've laid our samples, this is completely sampled. I'm using um, McDSP's analog uh, AC202, the analog channel thing. And basically what this is, is it's uh, tape saturation and it gives an EQ characteristic as if you were putting it through. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a, a preamp or what. It, I don't know. It sounds really good. Uh, I think it's a preamp. Um but anyway, it sounds really good. So what I have going on here, as you can see, is it's adding some saturation, and then what it's doing is it's low, rolling off the extreme lows, bumping, and then cutting immediately after that, okay? I have it set to the USAA uh, mode. I'm giving a pretty significant bump, uh, 15 ips, this EQ type, which was standard, and then I switched it to modern tape, I think, by stock. It's vintage. And what I'm looking for here is I'm driving the input so that I can see some actual gain reduction. So I'll bypass that and bring it in. Let me go to a busier part here. See how it's like bringing it forward? It, it, it adds some low end, yes, but it, it sounds like it's kind of smashing against a wall now. And uh, this is compressing it and kind of pushing it to the front. I don't know everything that's going on with this plugin, but I really like it on kick drums. And so that's what I'm using here. Next, we have another McDSP plugin, the uh, 4020 Retro EQ. Okay, and I'm not messing with any of the high end here. I'm only messing with the low mids and I'm messing with the lows. So low mids, I have, let's say around 400, maybe 450 and I'm cutting a lot. I don't know how much, there's no numbers on here, but probably seven dB or so of that. And then the, the low filter, I'm boosting around 90, I don't know, maybe four or five dB. So I'll knock that out and then bring it in. Getting those extreme lows in there, right? Okay, so, so far we've compressed and saturated with this one plugin, and then we sculpted the low end a little bit to give us a little bit more. Next is FabFilters Pro C2, which is uh, just a compressor. Uh, I have it set to the punch style. 
uh, slower attack and super fast release. And then I think I'm getting like 10 dB of gain reduction or something. So I'll bypass that and bring it in. Seven dB of game reduction. I mean, and and what that's for is again just pushing it to the front. We're we're compressing it a little bit here, and now we're compressing it a lot with a with a slow attack. We're letting that transient through fast release. We're cutting it off. We're effectively increasing the dynamic range between the transient and the decay, and therefore making it sound like it's hitting harder than it is. Um, four to one ratio. I just think that stock and this punch style. I'm not sure what it's modeling, uh, but that that helps helps it punch you can have this display up here i get rid of it it distracts me and i i like focusing on these meters uh visual graphic displays kind of mess me up a little bit so let me talk about methodology for a minute if you notice there's no top end eq going on right now a lot of people would be concerned because generally you with a metal kick drum you need to boost top end here's the deal I used a sample on this. I used all samples. There was no real kick mic whatsoever, and that's typically the way I record. I know I have these pre-baked samples, particularly these two, that have a lot of top end to them. And so what I'm doing is actually using the different samples to EQ. Uh, these are these are the two that I start with. These are my baseline, which were the, the actual kick that we sampled. And then I'm using all of these other samples to blend it in and get the desired sound that I want. Therefore, afterwards, I just need to saturate a little bit, tweak the EQ a little bit more, and then compress, okay? And that's all I'm doing. So if you're mixing metal, if you're getting that stuff done, what I would urge you to do is, again, get it right at the source. If you're not recording a real kick drum, which is totally fine, it makes editing way easier, uh, it, it makes sloppy playing that much more easy to sound great, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, make sure that you're getting it right at the source. And in this case, the source would be the trigger. It would be the sample. I don't see why people are so opposed to using a lot of different samples. Use a lot of them. Learn to blend them. Uh, as you can see, I flipped the phase on a bunch of them, and I'm not listening for a particular thing. A lot of people say, hey, flip the phase, and if it has more low end or less low end or whatever, I don't really care about that. What I care about is what it sounds better, okay? Uh, to get all of these in phase, I would need to print every single one of these tracks and then run them through either an auto alignment plugin like Auto Align, uh, Pi, or go in and do it by hand. But I don't really care. I'm trying to get the best sound I can. And if that means that a couple of these are slightly out of phase with each other, that's totally fine if it gets the sound that I want to get because no one on the end, the receiving end is going to care whether my six samples are in phase or not. They're going to care if that kick sounds great. And so that's my goal is to get the kick to sound great. So get a bunch of samples, start with a baseline and then say, okay, does it need more top end? I'm going to go find a sample for that. So on and so forth. Sorry, I'd cut there for a minute. The point is find samples that work for you and then work through your kick after that because you will need far less processing later. So yeah, you can just hear it focuses uh, the kick more. It, 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 it kind of takes this mushy kind of kick and gives it some, some cut through the middle of the mix and um, uh, really helps it stand out. So yeah, that's that's it. Pretty simple. Um, like I said, getting it all here at um, the the digital source. So we, again, we didn't record with an actual kick pad. Uh, so play around with blending samples uh, and you might find something that's cool. Once again, thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. If you want to stay tuned for the giveaway that should be coming up in a few days, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when that video releases and as well subscribe to the channel so you can see the rest of this video as we go out at the very end i will show you in the context of the mix what all has happened to the drums from dry to finish mix and all of that stuff so um once again thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching and i'll see you next time